Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another news I missed, and without further ado, let's jump right into it. El Salvador, the first country to legalize Bitcoin as legal tender, has been pushed down yet another spot. In total cryptocurrency ATM installations, as Australia reportedly has around 216 ATMs stepping into 2023. Oh, just in case you didn't know, this was also one of the most popular news stories of its time for some odd reason my mind can't calculate. As part of El Salvador's drive to establish Bitcoin as legal tender, President Naib Bukele decided to install over 200 ATMs, that is to say crypto ATMs across the country, while this move made El Salvador the third largest crypto ATM hub behind the United States and Canada. Really? Okay. Spain and Australia overtook the Central American country's ATM count in 2022 for some reason. So this was this made a lot more sense years ago. This is like a, you know, never-ending tale before time or whatever it's called. Years ago when it was actually quite difficult to get access to Bitcoin or crypto or anything within the space. One of the easier ways was by using uh, local Bitcoins or uh, by going to a Bitcoin ATM. But they fell out of favor, at least I believe so. Do you remember like around 2018, 2019, there were like multiple news stories of people going to uh, Bitcoin ATMs and breaking the ATMs? Do you know why? Because they thought that there were actual physical Bitcoin inside of these machines. I don't know what that was all about. But a lot of people just simply gained more access to Kraken or to Coinbase or to any other crypto exchange out there. So not many people actually, as far as I knew, uh, we're actually using Bitcoin or cryptocurrency ATMs anymore, lo and behold. On October 2022, Cointelegraph reported that Spain became the third largest crypto ATM hub after installing 250 crypt 15 crypto ATMs. However, Spain continued its installation drive and is home to 226 ATMs at the time of writing El Salvador's position as the fourth largest crypto ATM hub was short-lived as Australia stepped up its game, so it says, over the following months. And there's a little chart right there. So I have yet to figure out why this at any point made very popular news. A lot of times stuff in the cryptocurrency space usually doesn't make sense in the first place. Uh, but yeah, for some reason... Australia uh, surpasses El Salvador number of crypto ATMs. Australia dethrones El Salvador as the fourth largest crypto ATM hub. Does anyone, and I mean this in like a, a you know, a real question. Is anyone still using these? Do, 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 you, do you find a use for them? The original idea was an extra layer of, of privacy, if you will. And that you could find these machines and you could insert your money and you would essentially get crypto onto a QR code or however you were getting it to your uh, your wallet. But then a lot of countries uh, made people install cameras on them, and they quickly, quickly lost popularity around many spaces around the world. So, yeah, one of the more popular news stories of, of the new year is that Australia beat out El Salvador to have more crypto ATMs with them. Will they have more by the end of this year? No one knows. I guess we have to wait for the exciting conclusion of how many Bitcoin ATMs are in every single country. It's weird news, right? It's it's not. It's kind of like, okay, and I was looking around, but it kept on popping up, and I was like, clearly this, clearly this mattered to someone. That's the Australia has more crypto ATMs than El Salvador news. I mean, it's 2023, so why not? Okay, let's move on. Also in this is always popular news, crypto exchange Coinbase has been granted permission by the Central Bank of Ireland to act as a virtual asset service provider, VOSP, according to a 21st of December announcement. The company's operations in the country will be overseen by Cormac Denon, a former employee of the website crypto, Deloitte and Citigroup. So that means he has money under the VOSP registration. 
Coinbase Ireland will be subject to the Criminal Justice Money Laundering and T Finance, probably can't say that, Financing Act of 2021. Two Coinbase entities are covered by the Voss Registration, Coinbase Europe Limited and Coinbase Custody International Limited. Ooh, international, that's fancy. The first provides crypto trading services to European customers, logically, while Coinbase Custody International provides crypto custody to institutional clients across the region. So a lot of times whenever we get news that it, it, it really doesn't matter. It's Coinbase, Kraken, Binance, uh, other name, uh, receive some type of regulatory approval to be able to work in, especially usually if it's Europe. I mean, 99%, 99% of the time, we're not hearing that there's like a, a Latin America wide uh, registration permission, something that's being granted. We seldom, if ever, hear about this happening in Africa either. So it's usually since last year, or even the year before that, cryptocurrency exchanges have been trying to expand rapidly into uh, Europe. And the easiest way for many of them to do it is by going to Ireland, which I believe is part of the European Union, getting paperwork there, and therefore it kind of de facto allows them to be able to do business across the rest of the region. So we get news like this all the time. It always ends up being popular. I try to sympathizingly understand why people would love news like this, but alas, uh, here we are. That's the Coinbase. Got some paperwork that they filed a couple of years ago, and now they're legally able to work in Ireland, and I assume we're going to get news middle of this year that they're in France, and then in Spain, then in Germany, then Italy, and then all will be right in the world news. Yeah? Let's move on. Also in, okay, leading cryptocurrency exchange Binance stated on the 29th of December that its users can now purchase cryptocurrencies using both Apple Pay and Google Pay. If you, we're, 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 we're in the, uh, you can pay any way you want to pay as long as you pay us uh, phase of the, of the cryptocurrency uh, timeline, history. A lot of companies are now integrating or being integrated with cryptocurrencies uh, to allow people to, I believe, uh, use cryptocurrencies as a uh, payment method. I doth not think that that's going to be taking off anytime soon, as many people are at least waiting for some of the previous all-time highs. But I do find it quite fascinating that a lot of the companies and entities that uh, either blocked advertisements for crypto before, said crypto was garbage, they hated crypto. Now they're all kind of rushing to be, you know, a part of this new world. Following the collaborations and expansion plans with the two renowned platforms, which are two of the most frequently utilized payment methods worldwide. What? I would have never known that. It will be much simpler for Binance users to purchase and sell crypto. The action is also expected to increase cryptocurrency usage during the current bear market, as these popular mobile wallets are for the chance for a sizable user base. Yeah, I mean, Apple Pay is... I, I don't even know if Apple Pay is larger than Google, but I kind of see it everywhere. Like, a lot of times if you go into a store, I'm actually quite shocked. I, maybe I was just not paying attention for the last three years. But everything has a Visa card, a MasterCard. Is like some other... I don't know. I don't know what that symbol is. And then there's also like an, an Apple thing. And I'm like, that's wild. I wasn't expecting Apple to be, you know, so prominent. But alas, here we are. At present. Oh, yeah, I, I was right. At present, 25 million people use Google Pay. While 43.9 million people are using Apple Pay. Currently, there's a 2% transaction fee. The features accessibility, accessibility, there we go, varies depending on where the user is. That sounds kind of stupid in the age of the internet. Additionally, Twitter was filled with individuals who claim the feature is now operational and has undergone successful testing. I think a lot of this has come about during the course of the uh, slowing down of or pushing prices down of the cryptocurrency market. Like Over the course of this year-long uh, sad cloud that's been floating over the market. Uh, the ways of acquiring crypto and selling crypto and using your crypto has almost skyrocketed. Think of, you know, even before, you know, we could have done everything already with crypto. But now the amount of like easy options to be able to do stuff with your Bitcoin 
and your other cryptocurrencies is uh, it's quite striking. I had assumed this would take a, a number of years for this to actually get this way. But I think by, by the time we have another like rip-roaring bull market, I think there will no longer be a question as to what you can buy with crypto. It's simply like, are you going to be spending your crypto? Are you going to be one of those people? That's, I think, is going to be the question. So yeah, Binance has integrated with Apple Pay and Google Pay. So you can now pay your way to buy some crypto with those platforms. All right. Let's move on. Also in news, according to Chinese journalist Colin Wu, popular cryptocurrency exchange Huobi will be laying off a large chunk of their personnel and reduce the compensation of top, that sounds terrible and reduce the top the English and reduce the compensation of top employees. Reportedly, the business plans to lay off between 600 to 800 workers. Down from its current head count of 12... What? Okay, so they have 1,200 people working there. And they're looking to lay off 800 people. Ooh. Furthermore, the exchange will no longer provide annual incentives. What's the point of working there? I feel like that's kind of a... That should be the question of the article. Like, what's the point of me staying in this company if you're not going to give me anything? I have no further con- compensation for the top employees. At least three of my friends in the office are going to be fired. And no more annual incentives? Is Binance hiring? Because that, okay. The exchange has denied rumors that it may be laying off workers due to an extensive workforce, excessive workforce in a statement released last month. However, those in the know, okay, have verified that Huobi will proceed with the strategy, which includes reducing the salaries of its top executives. That probably should have happened before. Have you guys ever looked into how much uh, like executives and CEOs actually make? There's a thousands of documentaries at this point. There are a couple of charts that show uh, if the average worker, you know, the people who work in companies who are usually usually doing more work than the actual CEO, if their uh, wages had continued to increase the same exact way that they did for CEOs, many people would be making like fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars per month. It's really insane, and I think a lot of it, from what I've learned. Started roughly around like the 1970s, like when this whole like new banking craze and CEO uh, thing of people giving themselves more money because they thought that they were doing better than the other employees really began to take off. I think the average pay of a CEO previously, I think was five or seven times higher. So i.e., if you were making 10000 a year, they were usually making 50000 to 70000 a year. But now if you're making like... 50,000 a year, they're making like 7.5 million. It's a really it's a really weird uh stretch for things that have been going on. As of the 18th of December, the first in a series of year-end promotions that the firm announced last month went live. Users may enter and it talks about like giveaways or something like that. Sure. I how how are you giving away crypto and you're 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 firing people. So this is along the the very long line of Companies letting go people in the last year in the cryptocurrency space. Um, a lot of, I'll, I'll say it and then end it. A lot of companies, from what we've seen on this channel, have allegedly uh, not been doing well financially because they simply overspent uh, when the market was last going high. They expected the market to go up forever, and now they're having to fire people. I can only hope that. During the course of the next bull run, these companies save extra money, don't simply overspend, so that when the market does re-re-downturn in 2026 or whatever the year might actually be, uh, that they can still keep their employees because I'm pretty sure it's terrible that 800 people are going to be laid off. And this is one of many companies who keep announcing things like this, so let's hope that it gets better for people before it... For it doesn't, that's the Huobi. Apparently, we'll be laying off, apparently, a lot of people. No longer annual incentives. Like, why? Okay. Let's move on. Also in the news is, the Iranian government's OCSSOP, I have no idea what that is, is giving back some of its mining hardware 
it confiscated during raids on underground cryptocurrency operations. This is according to the Financial Tribune. The Iranian courts issued the ruling. A long time ago, the idea of plugging a computer into a wall and running code uh, was something that just wasn't illegal because you were plugging your computer into a wall and running code. A lot of governments, the moment people realized that other people were plugging their computers into a wall and running code, but also making money from it, that kind of began the, the, the downfall saga of many different countries announcing that crypto mining was illegal or you couldn't do this or basically, and if you, and it's not even reading between the lines, it's, it's just reading between the money. Uh, the only people who are usually in many countries actually allowed to uh, mine cryptocurrencies are people who are already rich. The idea is that they have enough money to be able to apply for the licenses to be able to do it and also have enough money to spend millions on actually uh, buying the hardware. However, over the course of like the last four years, it's been very weird because it's not usually, I usually don't even bring it on news I missed, you know, alas. Uh, but a lot of people who end up getting caught or end up doing something bad uh, when they're mining crypto, they're not even like big operations. It's simply like someone finds them, someone tattles on them, someone rats them out. And people end up paying like thousands of dollars in fees, even if they only had like three machines on. There, there, are, a number of there are a number of countries around the world uh, where people have like, if you have a machine mining Bitcoin, like one machine, like you are doing something illegal. Think of that. You are running numbers on your screen to make money. Isn't it weird how like the other 9,000 things you can also do online to make money also aren't illegal? We live in a fascinatingly weird world. The country's Ministry of Economic Affairs and Finance cited the organization's chairman, Abdul Majid Estehadi, saying currently some 150,000 crypto mining machines. <laughs> can you imagine? 150,000 mining machines are being held by the OCSSOP, a large part of which will be released following judicial rulings. Machines have already been returned. I assume what a large portion of this was. Just hear me out here, you know, logic. This is probably like a, a, a situation where someone didn't pay up and then they got their stuff taken away. Like not even like a... I mean more like a, someone walking into your store and being like, hey, it's the beginning of the month. Give me what I'm owed for protection kind of thing. This is what I, I feel like it actually is. You know how much effort it takes to gather and collect 150,000 crypto mining machines? Think of, think of the effort it would take you to move 500 machines. Let's say you got six friends. How long it would take for you to move 25,000 machines? Yeah, see, it seems a little bit weird. Like, like, wait, yeah, okay. The official went on to say that the Iran's power generation, transmission, and distribution company, Tavanir, should provide suggestions for utilizing the mining equipment safely around the national grid. One of the main things they were saying or stating as to the reason why they did this uh, was that apparently too much electricity was being used and they weren't notified, so they had to take the machines. I assume the people who they took the machines from are either going to have to pay legal fees and or some other type of uh, fine that they're going to have to pay because someone else took their stuff that they're now going to be getting back. This was also quite popular news. Anytime that anything with like the mining industry happens, a lot of people get kind of riled up for whatever reason. They, they either can or can't do it or it costs too much money or there's like a ban like there is in New York State or something like that now. But sure, why not? I hope they all get their machines back. I hope everyone just signs a piece of paper so that the government knows, hey, look at me, I'm I'm running code on a computer, making more money, especially if like they're being taxed on it. Like, what's the problem? Like, the government will still get their slice of the digital pie, but, you know, even sometimes that's also not enough. That's the, um, that news. And yeah, let's move on. Also, in what? No way. That's crazy. 
According to a U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission filing made on Thursday, investment giant BlackRock has pledged $17 million to insolvent Bitcoin mining company known as Core Scientific, that is C-O-R-Z or Cores, as part of a fresh $75 million loan from the mining company that they secured from note holders. In case you missed it, a couple of weeks ago, it made head waves, shock waves, people were scared waves that the one of the largest mining companies on the planet apparently went broke. How they went broke, we don't know the specifics of it, but I mean, really, and this is not a joke, get it together. I truly do fail to understand how they could have been that big and they still had to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Like, I don't honestly get it. I assume they were generating hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin per year. I assume they ex ex expanded way too fast and, and too furious. And this is uh, the current situation. According to data from FactSet, BlackRock is Core Scientific's biggest shareholder. For those of you who don't know BlackRock, they're the company that owns the world. That's not a, a joke or a euphemism. BlackRock literally owns the entire world. And I guess they also own, uh, does, what is this called? Uh, core Scientific as well. I was looking for the word. I was like, mining? What? As, as of Wednesday, they control $37.9 million in convertible notes. The filing states that the most recent $17 million is part of the new $75 million convertible notes that are part of the core's scheduled bankruptcy procedure. Prearranged bankruptcy occurs when the debtor and its creditors negotiate a repayment plan prior to the bankruptcy filing. So, I, I, a little, all of 2022 was very odd. The amount of companies who went belly up or bust or disappeared or simply weren't doing well. A lot of them were acquired by companies. How do I say this? I think a lot of the movements last year were very weird. I don't know how much of it is uh, coordinated, but when you talk about BlackRock swooping in to save a company, that was, just, I don't know, it's, it, it's all kind of weird. So BlackRock is at it again. For those of you who did not know, BlackRock is... Uh, one leg, five arms, and 16 toes deep into the cryptocurrency space. They love Bitcoin. They've mentioned many times that they think that Bitcoin is basically the future. So, you know, I guess this is where this news comes from. That's the BlackRock news because, you know, they're, they've been into crypto since like 2014. You know, that's just, that's just how they roll. All right. Let's move on. Also, and this was popular on the 30th of December, 2022, Jeremy Hogan, a partner at the American law firm Hogan and Hogan, okay, who has been closely following and commenting on the US SEC's lawsuit against Rappel, explained why he owns XRP. As you may remember, I don't. On the 22nd of December, 2020, the US SEC announced that it had filed an action against Ripple Labs and two of its executives, who were also significant security holders, alleging that they raised over $1.3 billion through an unregistered ongoing digital asset security offering. But we all learned quite quickly that it was just corruption from the side of the SEC. Hogan apparently went to Twitter and told people, I own XRP because I know Ripple can't be sued again. Yeah, that's C, that's C. Significant story. He said, I own Algorand because the Algorand Foundation won't be sued at all. I own Algorand because they're being used by FIFA. That's, that's my side of the story. When asked what stops the CFTC, the Commodities Futures Trading Commission, from suing Ripple Next, Hogan replied that the CFTC would essentially have to allege some kind of fraud. And even the SEC couldn't come up with that. A lot of the times, you may have noticed, uh, there's a lot more XRP news that's flowing around. The end of last year, we got a significant amount of news about a lot of companies who claimed before that they did not like uh, Ripple. 
uh, actually joined their side on the lawsuit against the SEC. It is widely believed no one knows any date because that's just how the future works. Uh, it is alleged and believed that sometime this year, and even in quarter one, that the uh, Ripple versus SEC lawsuit is going to end. And if it does, uh, it will be in Ripple's favor and XRP will skyrocket. There was another article. I don't think I have it here. There was some other billionaire talking about he's buying up huge amounts of XRP right now because it's, you know, it's a, he believes it's a safe bet and all this other stuff. No, listen, literally not financial advice. No one knows what's going to happen. However, I will say I do think it's a bit interesting that all these companies have joined the side of Ripple as we're nearing the end of the lawsuit. So who knows what's actually going to happen? Uh, yeah, basically, uh, the even the, the allegations that the SEC came up with, they haven't proved it. For those of you who haven't been keeping track of the lawsuit, it's been, two, it's been over two years. Um, and everything that they alleged, they could not prove in court. So it's been over 24 months, they couldn't prove anything, and they keep trying to get the the procedure delayed or the ending of the lawsuit delayed, I guess because they know they done goofed and they have nothing to actually prove. That's the IO and XRP because Ripple can't be sued again news. Very popular, as, as one might have imagined. I, I think if this news had not been popular, I would have been, I mean, completely shocked, like absolutely completely lost because the... People who like XRP really like XRP, but the same exact way. Like, if, if, if you know, if you like Bitcoin, you love Bitcoin. The people who love Cardano, you know, there's no other coin for them. Already, let's move on. Yeah, okay, Bitcoin's gone offline. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. That says seventy-five thousand pending transactions. That's crazy Ethereum. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, and or evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.